What you guys today we're taking a look at five compute mistakes people still make in 2023 and probably will be making in 2024. Now these compute mistakes are just only five and there's plenty more that I can add to the list. So if you want to see more like this, let me know in the comments section below. And also let me know in the comments section below what type of mistakes that you see people still making with their computer. Okay, let's start off with number one which is the username and password of your router or router if you live in the United States. But basically, by not changing your username and password, whether you've purchased a router for yourself or whether you're using one from your ISP, it's important that you change the username and password of your router when you're uh, using the device for the first time. And the reason why is because most people will know what the default username and password are for these particular uh, routers or routers. And the thing is, once they gain access to this menu system, like you see here, they can open up a port for themselves to connect in and they will be able to remote into your network or remote into your computer, or they will be able to get access to your Wi-Fi details for your password and things like that. So you need to be very, very careful. The first thing you should be doing when you power on your router for the first time is going straight into the menu system and changing the username and password of that router or router, if you want to call it that. Next up is changing the wireless details, changing the wireless SSID and the security password that they will require to gain access to your Wi-Fi. Now, this is important also because obviously, the default ones are pretty much well known. Now, let me show you a website which you can access, which will give you the default login details for all of the manufacturers that you see here for routers or routers. And you can see here, you can go through this list and click on them and it will tell you what the default IP address is and what the username is and what the password is to gain access. And it's quite scary to think that so many people just leave this on as default. They plug the router in and guess what happens? They get internet access and they go, oh, that's okay. We'll just leave it as it is. I don't need to go into there. I'm not quite familiar with the uh, menu system. I'll just leave it. And then they use the default on the bottom of the router or they will get a stickers and they will put them around uh, the house so they know exactly how to connect to that Wi-Fi network. Now, before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or a cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. You can create an account over there and then basically use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount over the Christmas period. Now, once you submit your order, you can pay by PayPal and they will then send you your key and you'll be able to activate your version of Windows and remove that annoying watermark that you may be seeing down on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So let's now get back to the tutorial, moving on to number three, which is firmware updates. Now, some people get a bit frightened with firmware updates, but when you're running a router or router, it's important to keep that firmware updated because this is going to patch a lot of security flaws that have been found by the company and also add new features to your router or router. Now also, the firmware updates are not just to talk about uh, the actual router device. We're talking about other important devices like your network attached storage devices, your NAS, and other things like your motherboard BIOS, which is a firmware that needs to be updated to make sure you're getting the latest security patches and other features that might have been added to that motherboard now this normally happens at the very beginning when they first release the motherboard it will have very bare minimum uh, settings on there for memory and things like that and once that uh, starts to get to released the manufacturer will start releasing bios updates at a big rate and you will get loads and loads of bios updates so for motherboards it's important to update the bios at the very beginning when you first buy it and you'll probably notice after about you know, a year, they start petering out the uh, the actual BIOS updates for that motherboard because they're obviously releasing new motherboards and then they'll concentrate on those ones. So that's being said, 
it's important to update your firmware. Now, I know a lot of people tend to get frightened about updating the firmware just in case it crashes, and there's always a risk, but it's important on certain devices that you definitely update the firmware, I would say, on major critical devices, including things like your NAS, which we've covered already. This will also have important updates for security features and also uh, some other patches that might be added to fix flaws with their firmware, i.e. it might be some sort of ram ransomware vulnerability that they have now patched, and it's important that you run these updates. And it's frightening to think over the years, I've worked on many, many different uh, devices, and all of those have been way out of date. So it's important to keep those updated. Now, another one, which is number four, which is antivirus software. Now, I know this is a very touchy subject with some people, and some people even claim you don't need antivirus whatsoever on your computer. And that includes Windows Defender. Some people will go as far as removing all of the security features on their computer just to get a little bit of FPS boost, as they would claim. And some people will go as far as to even remove Windows Defender and all of the security features that protect Windows. Now, this is absolutely ludicrous when people are talking about every bit of security on your computer and just using your own uh, common sense to keep you safe. And yes, common sense will take you so far, but I do believe even in the modern day, you still need some sort of protection. Now, there's even YouTube channels out there that cover security that talk about antivirus programs that don't do anything for you. And it's just a placebo and it sits there doing nothing and it won't protect you at all, even against zero day malware. And some of this stuff is slightly true when it comes to not being able to protect you 100%. But what people forget is that people are assuming that everyone is like them, where they might be clued up enough not to do certain things on the computer and not to download certain files, not to click on certain links and things like that. But unfortunately, we're living in a world where most of the people that use computers on a daily basis are not up to snuff when it comes to, uh, you know, using a computer safely on the Internet. And this is why we see people still falling for scams and other types of uh, malicious phishing sites that are still quite uh, lucrative to a lot of cyber criminals. Ransomware is still on the rise. And of course, social engineering is still the new uh, crime of the century, which is basically what people are using to get information out of people. So it's very, very dangerous uh, not to have some sort of protection, especially for those vulnerable people that are not quite uh, clued up enough to protect themselves. So I would say it's better to have something than nothing whatsoever. So let's move on to the next one, which is to do with erasing data from hard drives and also SSDs. It's important in 2023 and even 2024 that we actually erase data correctly on our drives. I've seen so many drives with data which is easily recoverable and I've been working on old systems before where we're doing drive sanitation and things like that and I've seen all sorts of stuff that we can recover on them drives, email addresses, personal information, photographs, you name it and they haven't erased those drives correctly before selling those computers on or even giving those computers away for recycling purposes. And it's important that when you're you know, doing this, you need to either remove the drives and have them you know, destroyed correctly, or you need to destroy them yourselves. And it's important that you do this because if you don't do this, then it's quite easy to recover data from hard drives by just using a quick format on that computer is not going to remove any data on there and it's quite easy to recover data on ssds as well because we don't use uh, dban and things like that on uh, ssds and, and and devices like that we have to use different methods so it's important that you learn and understand how to secure erase all the data on your hard drives and on your SSDs. And I've made quite a few videos on that, so you can check those out on my channel. And this will help you uh, to securely erase data on your drives before you either sell them on eBay or before you give them away uh, for recycle or 
some sort of refurbished computer, it's important that you do that. Because if you don't do that and you've got uh, information on there like emails or even personal information like your passwords and things like that, this is going to be quite easy to uh, get hold of for people. And once they get this information, they can profile you and cause, cause a lot of problems for you. So it's important that you erase all of this information uh, correctly using the correct methods. And this is why I always say to people, never buy used hard drives uh, on eBay or any other site because this stuff could have all sorts of uh, information on it from the previous owners and it's now your responsibility and you've got that hard drive. It's important that you securely erase all of that information before you even put that drive to use. And uh, again, another one, which is another common uh, problem I see is people clicking on everything that they get sent to them by their phone or by email or by links in their DMs on Discord. And there's so many people that fall for this particular type of thing. And it's so simple. It doesn't have to be parcels that are getting delivered to you that have missed delivery, or it could be any type of scam that someone is trying to get you to click on something. And this is why think before you click is so important. If without you clicking on something, you're not going to get infected or you're not going to get uh, conned out of your hard earned cash. This could be messages sent by uh, WhatsApp. It could be messages sent by email or text messages. It could be any type of DM that someone sent you or a link that someone has sent you to check out an article or some sort of download link that you can click on to download. Uh, you know, whatever it is that you're downloading. So be very, very careful on what you're clicking on, because if you click on the wrong thing, you could get hit by ransomware and you could end up having all your data encrypted or even have your identity theft where someone's been able to gain access and log into your account or even lose money from your bank. And you really don't want to do any of this sort of stuff. So parcel delivery is just one thing. There's lots of other things you need to take into account before you start clicking on things, okay? So without clicking on anything, you're not going to get infected and you're not going to get conned out of your hard-earned money. Anyway, anyway, that's five or six common computer mistakes that people still make in 2023 and 2024. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know in the comment section below whether you've got any other common mistakes people still make. I might make another follow-up video with five more uh, common mistakes people do make anyway but that said i want to just say a quick shout out to all my youtube members i really do appreciate the support i shall catch you in the very next video or i'll see you on the discord server for chat bye for now